If there is anything I want to accomplish with this video is for Dakota Schiffer to see it. Please, my fellow gays, help me achieve that. Hello everyone, my name is Roberto Gizian, but you may call me Robbie for short, and today we'll be giving Pokemon teams to the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race UK Series 4. This is the first video tackling the UK version of the show, so I'm going to do things a little differently. For a full Pokemon League, we need 13 positions to fill in the 8th gym leaders, the Elite 4 members, and the champion. Since there are only 12 queens this season, I'll be using a Galar League approach, in which there are only 8 gym leaders for this region. I promise, it'll make sense. The first two gym leaders will have two Pokemon, the rest will have three, the final gym leader will have four Pokemon, and the champion will still have a team of six. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure to subscribe so you won't miss future videos of other Drag Race seasons, as well as more Pokemon content coming your way. And without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with our first eliminated queen, Just May, whom I gave a normal type specialty as she unfortunately had a Just May performance this season. I wrote this joke before the roast episode came out, and then they stole it from me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I I could have never known. Her first Pokemon is Litleo, based on her entrance look. May considers herself to be the UK's premier Jerry Halliwell impersonator, better known as Ginger Spice from the Spice Girls. I figured that having a fire type on her team would be a good way to represent that aspect of her drag. When Litleo evolves, it becomes a Pyroar, whose mane matches the hair that May typically wears. And her second Pokemon is Herdier based on her Ru Are You runway. I was at a loss for what Pokemon to include on May's team, so I searched for Jerry Halliwell favorite animal, and her dog Hugo came up as a result. Jerry Halliwell had a pet dog named Hugo who passed away in 2020, and I thought he looked similar to a herdier after seeing a picture of him. Ginger Spice has also had a couple of other pet dogs as well, so I still think it's a good choice. Our second gym leader says she's a little bit goofy, but her face is giving monotone. Starlet. Starlet's fashion is reminiscent of old Hollywood glamour with expensive pieces of jewelry. They say diamonds are a girl's best friends, so I ultimately decided on a rock type specialty. With that in mind, her first Pokemon is Carbink, based on her Rue Are You runway. According to Bulbapedia, Garbink is created from high temperatures and pressures underground, just like a diamond in real life. Carbink is also a fairy type, which is what this outfit is trying to simulate. Finally, Starlet's second Pokemon is Minyor, based on her entrance look. A Starlet, by definition, is a young actress with aspirations of becoming a star. Minyor is quite literally based on a meteor, which many people alternatively call a shooting star. Minyor is also a flying type, which makes sense since the star is in the literal sense an exploding ball of gas that's mostly made up of hydrogen and helium. Next, we have our third gym leader, Copper Top, whom I'm convinced would be a steel type trainer. Her first Pokemon is Magneton, based on her entrance look. Copper is a metallic element that is good at conducting electricity, which makes sense for this electric and steel type Pokemon. Magneton's bluish gray color scheme also meshes well with this look. Her second Pokemon is Cufant, because of course she needs a Pokemon with copper in its name. It comes from the Latin word cuprum, which literally means copper. And her final Pokemon is Empoleon, based on her promo look. This was the first choice I made immediately after the cast was announced. Her dress is inspired by the famous Neptune statue from her hometown of Cheltenham. Empoleon shares the same inspiration as its beak bears resemblance to Poseidon's trident in Greek mythology. Neptune is Poseidon's counterpart from Roman mythology. Empoleon can be obtained after level 36, but since Copper is only the third gym leader, in a regular playthrough, a Prinplup would have to suffice. Our fourth gym leader is the Manchester mannequin Sminty Drop, whose drag name earned her an ice type specialty. Minty Drop. Minty Fresh Breath, Icebreakers, Dinty Nice. Her first Pokemon is Frozmoth, based on her main event runway. This choice is absolutely obvious. The look is inspired by a moth. Frozmoth is based on a moth. You can do the math. Her second Pokemon is Glaceon, based on her Bingo She Better Don't runway. I mostly focused on color scheme for this one, but I also wanted to include one of her highlights on the show, as she was in the top this episode. And finally, her third Pokemon is Cryogonal, 
based on her unaired West End Wonders runway. This look solidified Sminty's ice type specialty for me, as it's inspired by the West End theater production of Disney's Frozen. Cryogonal is based on a snowflake, so it made perfect sense. Up next is Baby, who quit the competition to focus on her mental health. To make her departure make sense with this video, I propose we make her a retired gym leader who let Dakota Schiffer take over her position, whom we'll talk about a little later. I still wanted to include a Pokemon team for her because she was still a contestant, so I decided on a psychic type specialty. Her first Pokemon is a Lolan Raichu, based on her BBC Keeping It 100 runway. Raichu is classified as a mouse Pokemon, which loosely references the British show Ross the Mouse that this look is based on. This pairing came together when I searched for Rasta Mouse online and saw these pictures of the character on the beach, which ties into the fact that this is Raichu's Alolan form. Raichu's electric typing also references her friendship and challenge win with Dakota Schiffer. Plus, Pichu is the baby form of Raichu, which I thought was a nice nod to her drag name. Her second Pokemon is Chimeko, based on her West End Wonders runway. This look is based on a jukebox musical and Juliet which explores an alternate story where Juliet doesn't end her life. Most people reference the original Shakespearean play from the balcony scene, so here's how I connected Chimeco to this look. Chimeco is based on a wind chime, which are typically set up on people's balconies. Chimeco also has a baby form, Chingling, which borrows the same logic as her first Pokemon on her team. Her final Pokemon is Hisuian Braviary, based on her Neon Knights runway. This look is covered in bright, colorful feathers, which made me think of Braviary because it's also a flying type. I opted for a Hisuian form because it further connects her to Dakota, which you'll notice later during Dakota's segment. Our fifth gym leader is the androgynous Asian sensation, Lefil, whom I gave a dragon type specialty. Their first Pokemon is Noibat, based on their promo look. Bats are known to have sensitive, well-developed hearing, which is why Noibat's evolutionary line has ears that resemble speakers. Phil's dress is inspired by the Brighouse and Rastrick brass band, so I figured a sound-inspired Pokemon would work well. Plus, the color matches nicely. Their second Pokemon is Altaria, based on their Snatch Game performance. The Phil did an impersonation of Marie Kondo, who is a well-known organizing consultant and internet meme. You know, the Japanese lady who asks you if it sparks joy? Swablu's Pokedex entries talk about how it won't rest until its surroundings are clean, which is kind of funny when you think about it. Their final Pokemon is Drampa, based on their grand finale, Eleganza Runway. I wanted to include their Chinese heritage somehow, and since Drampa is based on a Chinese dragon, this felt like a good choice. This look is inspired by the Japanese art of Kintsugi, which uses gold to glue together broken pieces of pottery to make something new. I paired Drampa to this runway because I thought the color scheme matched nicely. Our next gym leader is Dakota Schiffer, who is an avid Pokemon fan. I gave her an electric type specialty because of her homage to Elisa, the Nimbasa City gym leader. Her first Pokemon is Zebstrika, based on the look I just mentioned. This is her Neon Knights runway from the second episode, which she took inspiration from Elisa's outfit, specifically from Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. I chose Zebstrika as it is Elisa's ace Pokemon. Her second Pokemon is Electros, based on her Bingo She Better Don't runway. Electros is another Pokemon that's part of Elisa's lineup during the Pokemon World Tournament in the Black 2 and White 2 games. I matched Electros to this look because of its color scheme, and because it was Dakota's second challenge win in the competition. Her final Pokemon is Hisuian Electrode, based on her Snatch Game performance. This one is just a funny choice. Dakota did an impersonation of Pete Burns, who is mostly known for the song You Spin Me Round Like a Record from Dead or Alive. There's a disco ball in the music video and Electrode is round. Dakota's drag aesthetic is inspired from the 60s and harkens back to the movie Valley of the Dolls, so I figured a Hisuian form was more fitting as it comes from the past. Up next is our seventh gym leader. She is Pixie Polite by name, Pixie Polite by nature. Her drag name comes from her love of the Disney Fairies franchise, so I gave her a fairy type specialty. Her first Pokemon is Clefable, based on her promo look. If you remember my video for season 13, Olivia Lux branded herself as a polite diva, so I figured I would give Pixie a Pokemon that she would have in common with Olivia. I also like to think that Clefable's ears resemble the spikes on Pixie's shoulders. Her second Pokemon is Wigglytuff, based on her West End Runders runway. 
This look is inspired by Hairspray, a musical where the main character, Tracy Turnblad, dreams of performing on live television in the 60s. Wigglytuff is the evolved form of Jigglypuff, whom we all know loves to sing in front of an audience, even though that audience unwillingly falls asleep every time. Her final Pokemon is Florges, based on her look for the Makeover Challenge. Pixie really leaned into the fantasy forest fairy look for this runway. During her confessional, she mentioned how the outfits were inspired by her late grandmother's garden. It made perfect sense to add Florges to her team, since it's classified as the garden Pokemon. Our final gym leaders come as a set of two, Black Peppa and Jombers Blanc. You know how we had alternating gym leaders in Pokemon Sword and Shield, depending on which version you got? That's what I'll be doing here. Let's start with Black Peppa, the lip sync assassin for this season, whom I gave a water type specialty for her Caribbean heritage. The first Pokemon is Pelipper, based on her promo look. The pelican is the national bird of St. Martin, where Peppa is from. This was an easy choice, as she is sporting a giant gold pelican on her head. Her second Pokemon is Gastrodon, based on her BBC Keeping It 100 runway. She did a look inspired by Mr. Blobby, this pink life-size blow-up thing with yellow polka dots that apparently is popular in the UK. I also wanted to somehow highlight her only challenge win during this season. Her third Pokemon is Dreadnought, based on her Pretty in Punk runway. This choice was very simple. I thought the horn on Dreadnought's head looked like Peppa's mohawk. And her final Pokemon is Embor, which I based on her drag name. During Meet the Queens, she said that her drag name came from watching Peppa Pig hang up on her friend Susie Sheep because Susie could whistle and Peppa couldn't. She was so inspired by Peppa Pig's pettiness that she made her name Black Peppa. Embor is obviously not a water type, but it can learn the move Scald, a water type move that shoots boiling hot water that can leave opposing Pokemon with a burn. Plus, its fire typing fits perfectly with how Black Peppa says she is the seasoning of the season. Then we have Jomber's Blodge, the only Northern Irish queen this season whom I gave a flying type specialty. Her first Pokemon is Unpheasant, based on her rusical performance. She played the role of the bird lady and she did a fantastic job. I thought of the pigeon lady from Home Alone 2, and since Unpheasant is P Dove's final evolved form, which is based on a pigeon, it was a perfect choice. Her second Pokemon is Pau Style Oricorio, based on her tickled pink runway. It was either this or Flamigo, since there are only two pink bird flying type Pokemon. I didn't assign any Pokemon from Generation 9 to any queen in this video, so I opted to keep things consistent. Besides, Oricorio fits this runway really well right down to the pink feathers on the skirt. Her third Pokemon is Jumpluff, based on her rough and ready runway. I like to think the white tulle on her dress represents the fluff on Jumpluff's arms. Jumpluff's grass typing also references John Burr's Northern Irish nationality, which she heavily leaned into during her Snatch Game performance. It can also learn Seed Bomb, which references one of her jokes from the Rose Challenge. Her final Pokemon is Gyarados, based on her BBC Keeping It 100 runway. Her look is inspired by the British kids show Blue Peter. The Blue Peter was originally a blue maritime signal flag, meaning P or outward bound, flown to warn a ship's crew in port of an imminent sailing. I thought of Gyarados because it's an intimidating sea creature, partly influenced by the Kraken, which is known for its destructive behavior though the Kraken is more commonly depicted as a giant squid. We have eight gym leaders covered, but we still have one more contestant before we move on to the winner. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, after battling all the gym leaders, you enter the Champion Cup, a tournament-style competition in which the winner faces off against the champion. I'm using the same logic here with a little added twist. You, as the player, would battle your way through this tournament, beating out every other randomly selected gym leader. In the end, whoever wins all the battles must face one final challenge before battling the champion. In this case, that challenger is Cheddar Gorgeous. She and Danny Beard are champion. Both reach the finale with four challenge wins without ever landing in the bottom, a feat that has never been achieved by two queens simultaneously in the same season. So I opted for a team of four Pokemon with various types. Her first Pokemon is Vespa Quen, based on her promo look. Pretty simple, her look is inspired by a bee. While Beedrill looks more identical, I chose Vespa Quen instead for its more competent base tag total. Her second Pokemon is Behem, based on her entrance look. 
This is a perfect choice for her, as Behem is inspired by an extraterrestrial being. Behem looks like it's wearing a trench coat, which is similar to what Cheddar is wearing here. Her third Pokemon is Shenotic, based on her Neon Knight's runway. Another obvious choice. There are a couple of mushroom Pokemon, but Shenotic is the most fitting with its colorful appearance and fairy typing. Her final Pokemon is Pheromosa, based on her rusical performance. I know I said in a previous video that gym leaders shouldn't have Ultra Beasts because they can be overly powerful, but technically Cheddar isn't a gym leader, nor is she an Elite Four member. And I can justify this choice because she's branded herself as an alien deity, which is exactly what Ferramosa is. This Pokemon is inspired by a cockroach, and Cheddar played the mother of all cockroaches in this Rusical. It was disgusting, yet amusing, all at the same time. I ultimately chose Ferramosa to balance out her team a bit, which contains Pokemon with below average stats and various weaknesses. Now that we're finished with all the other contestants, let's move on to the champion. At last, we've reached our final challenge. One more trainer to face before receiving the title of Pokemon League Champion. Danny Beard is one of the most well-rounded performers the Drag Race has had the pleasure of showcasing. With four challenge wins under her belt, I wanted to give Danny a formidable and equally well-rounded team. Her first Pokemon is Cramorant, based on her promo look. Danny Beard is from Liverpool, where the national bird is the Liverbird. The Liverbird is meant to be a mythical creature, though it's usually represented as a cormorant on the coat of arms. Cramorant fits well here because of the dress shades of blue and abundant feathers. Her second Pokemon is Galarian Weezing, based on her rusical performance. She played the role of Larry Poppins, a dirty and raunchy cousin of Mary Poppins. I thought it was a good contrast because this regional variant of Weezing expels clean air from the toxic gases it consumes. Galarian Weezing also fits Danny's brand of bearded drag. Her third Pokemon is Cray Dilly, based on her West End Wonders runway. This look was inspired by the musical Little Shop of Horrors. Cray Dilly has a unique and interesting design that definitely fits this crazy plant-like creature. Her fourth Pokemon is Alakazam based on her tickled pink runway. I mostly focus on Danny's mustache for this look, which to me resembles Alakazam's whiskers. Alakazam is a popular choice among competitive players, and it's definitely an intimidating Pokemon, especially if you've battled against the Kanto gym leader, Sabrina. Her fifth Pokemon is Blissey, based on her BBC Keeping It 100 runway. This look was also inspired by Mr. Blobby, whom we talked about during Black Peppa's segment. Danny's approach, though, gives this an egg-like shape. And guess what Blissey has on its belly? The white tool below the pink dress also resembles the wing-like tufts on Blissey's sides. Her final Pokemon is Scentiscorch, based on her pretty in punk runway. This is the last of Danny's spatial hair-themed Pokemon. When I think of punk, a couple of things come to mind, like electric guitars and chains, but I also somehow think of creepy crawlers. Danny Beard ultimately beat Cheddar Gorgeous in that finale lip sync, so I like to think Sensha Scorch is the main Pokemon that Danny used to decimate her team, since most of Cheddar's Pokemon are weak to fire. Congratulations, Danny Beard, for your tremendous showing throughout this season, and cheers to another Pokemon generation with new species and fun adventures to experience. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and as always, I appreciate you being here. Bye!